hey guys welcome back to my channel it is taj taylor uh, we're back with a walk with christ series um today i don't have a topic for my video i'm gonna let the holy spirit walk uh, but by the time this comes out it'll be a title for it but at the moment i do not have a title um i just had some notes that i was just taking throughout my week because i really didn't want to just like smother you guys with the word of god um i really don't know where where my audience is with christ i don't know where you guys are when you're walk and so i just in that i just want to dial it back a little bit so that is the purpose of the a walk with christ series just explaining to you guys my personal walk with christ what it looks like um i am pursuing god um as much as i can every day um as much as i can in between work and you know everything else but god is my number one priority right now i can genuinely say god is my number one priority um and so just with that being the case um i can share my life and my testimony as i'm navigating that in the real world right um and so some of the things i just went through throughout the week i documented just to kind of share that with you so you guys can see how someone like myself was navigating um just these different things because it's like you know you could be of the spirit but we do live in this world and we're called to be a light in dark places and that that's hard when you come from when you come from certain things and certain backgrounds it's like drawing close to god really causes you to just redevelop who you are as a person who you believe you were like that has to change for the lord in order for you to be a reflection of the text where you will be a hypocrite and i don't want to be a hypocrite um so here i am really just trying to change for the lord um and always and not just stop sinning and stop doing these things but like actually have a heart for people like that's the big thing for me you know i grew up you know very to myself and so the lord is you know putting me drawing me close to him means i have to develop a heart for people i have to develop a heart for sinners i have to develop a heart for those who hate me i have to develop a heart for those who love me and so you know that's not that's not easy and so coming against those things means repenting and, and coming against pride, which is a Leviathan spirit, which they talk about if you guys read the book of Job. And so, you know, I just didn't want to smother you all with the text. Um, I'm thinking about doing a Sunday sermon uh, with actual, obviously I'm not a minister. I'm not a pastor, any of those things. But um, I thinking about doing like a Sunday sermon where we go over scripture and then like the walk with Christ series again, is just the personal testimony of my week. And so, you guys, one of the things that I've been struggling with lately um, is one, um, not operating out of desperation and two, not Id idolizing a career path. So, you guys just know a little bit of my story. If you don't, just to rewind it, um, when I graduated college uh, with a political science degree from Tennessee State University, um, life became hard for me because when I went to school, I thought I wanted to be a lawyer. Be being a political science major made me realize I don't want to be a lawyer. I just want to help people. Um, and so in that, just me throwing on this superhero cape just because of some things I went through as a child. I want to help people. Um, and then I realized I didn't want to go to law school because I couldn't help people how I wanted to with law school. Um, and so I really dove into the nonprofit sector once I graduated. Um, but that wasn't paying. So I did that. But I also did journalism. Journalism wasn't paying either. And I was interviewing hip hop artists. And I think at that time, like the Lord was delivering me out of, you know, the music industry because I, I made rap music at the time, secular rap music. I still make rap now, but it's all Christian based rap. Um, and so um, coming out of that journalism, then going into nonprofit. Oh, yeah. I just went on the worst after college job hunt ever. It was just terrible. I worked all types of jobs. And so um, my resume, like if you looked at my resume, like if I'm applying for jobs now, what did I read is social media coordinator for a nonprofit organization I work for. Um, it then go Zara stock associate, um, and then it'll go Nordstrom assistant department manager. And so, um, and from there, um, I left my job at Nordstrom to pursue the Lord because it was just the, the environment just was just very demonic. I just, it was a lot of idolatry of clothes. And I, I just couldn't get with it. And, um, I couldn't go to church every Sunday working as a manager at Nordstrom. You have to work Sundays. So I wasn't missing church for the job. And so um, Nordstrom was my highest paying job. And so I was unemployed for seven months from that. I just got a job um, September. I just got a job again. Um, and y'all, if I, I made more money than I made in high, I made more money in high school with no degree than I make right now. Just to, just to put things into context. I made more money when I was 17 years old in high school 
than I make now. But the Lord uh, really has shown me he's not concerned with our finances. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. He's not concerned with us being a multimillionaire. Uh-oh. He's not, he's not concerned with us having all these degrees and all these man-made ask lists. That's not the Lord's primary concern. It's just not. Not if you're not going to help the kingdom, if you're not going to spread the gospel, not if you're going to use your money to feed the poor and the homeless and spread the word of God. When David in the Bible came into position, he fed people during a famine. Y'all get money and y'all go by Bottega. And, and, and travel every other weekend. The Lord's not concerned with that. Um, the Lord's concerned with his people. And so what the Lord has shown me is like, Taj, like, I'm not concerned with your finances right now. I'm concerned with your spirit. I'm concerned with your soul. I'm trying to make sure you see the pearly white gates. That money, that money not get you to the pearly white gates. But my word will. And so in that, he's taught me the fruit of long suffering, which is a very hard fruit. That development of that fruit is one of the hardest developments ever. Is nothing you can do but suffer and be grateful and be thankful. Because boy... You know, some seasons I don't wish on myself again. If I'm just being transparent, it's certain seasons I don't want to see again. But, you know, if we, if we find our way, if we find ourselves back into those seasons, it's going to require a lot of prayer. And so I sell to say, um, some of you guys don't know, but, well, most of you guys don't know. But I, um, when I quit Nordstrom, I applied to go back to school again because I wanted to make some more money. And I was like, you know, you know, all of these jobs that I'm working, you know, I felt like that I wasn't walking in a purpose. And so um, I tried to niche down in a purpose and I wanted to um, go to school for architect. I really enjoy urban planning and development. Um, I wanted to be an urban planning planner and make um, neighborhoods um, that produce cultural adhesiveness, cultural. Um, well, I wanted to create neighborhoods that created an environment that was social, economically stable for a different vast of groups. Uh, minority groups, groups of color, POC, a homologous mix of low income um, areas that um, were were um, psychologically and mentally stable. Because, you know, where you where you grow up, that determines a lot. Like where you live, your street determines like the majority of your life. And, um, and so it was just really important to me. And I felt a call to action. Like I've always felt a call to action, y'all. So here's the timeline. I want to be a lawyer. Then I want to do nonprofit. Now I want to be an urban planner so I can create socioeconomical environments for low income people and families. So there's this theme here of like Taj wants to help save people. And so, um, I don't, I don't remember what I told y'all about that, but I know that um, I went to Young Adults Night at Victory Church on Tuesday um, and I sat with the Lord there. And as I was in the church, the Lord literally said, don't go. I said, I said, what? He said, don't go. I'm like, what's God talking about? I'm just sitting here praying, you know, head, head, and, head and hands now. Head bowed on the ground. Head and hands. And I'm hearing the words don't go. And it's like, I already know what he's talking about. He didn't even have to say too much. I knew what he was talking about. And so long story short, the Lord told me not to go to Baltimore because I was on my way to Baltimore to go into this school. A week and a half later, I actually got into the architecture program. So I actually did get into the Master's of Architecture program at Morgan State University. I live in Atlanta. So I was going to move and uproot myself there in January. The Lord told me not to go for two reasons, which I would not disclaim. Um, but I will talk about those two reasons once they come into fruition and we can reference this video. However, um, he told me to stay. Now, mind you guys, I make less money than I ever made in my life right now. And as a architect, you can make up to, well, 60, as low as 64,000, as high as really, you know, whatever, 80,000, you know. And so I've never, I've never seen that type of money. I want to touch that type of money. But again, the Lord was not concerned with that. Um, and what it showed me is like, I keep trying to save people, but the Lord is saying there's only way you can save anybody's soul through the word of God, my God, through Jesus, through the blood. That's the only way I can save you. My pastor always says, what's the purpose of giving a homeless person money? If they going to hell. We need to be speaking to people's spirits and souls, not to their pockets, not to their bank accounts, not to their zales 
We need to be speaking to people's spirits, their souls, because there's a life after this. This isn't everything. This life is terrible. <laughs> this life is terrible. If all, if earth was all life had to offer, I mean, what are we doing? And so, um, yeah, you know, I made more money in high school and the Lord is really just telling me like some of y'all have idolatry in y'all hearts for y'all career path. Some of y'all want to be a lawyer. Some of y'all want to be a doctor. Some of y'all want to be a rapper or artist, whatever it is y'all want to be. I mean, they're, they're good plans, right? You know, it's fruitful. You can pay things, but why are you pursuing what you're pursuing? Did you pray to the Lord before you determine your career path? Did you pray to the Lord before you picked your career path? And the Lord can use anything. I got a political science degree. I, the Lord is using that. Like he's using it in ways that have nothing to do with political science. So I'm not saying that the Lord won't use whatever you have done up until this point. But you have to be honest with yourself. Did the Lord ask me to do this? Why am I doing this? Is this for notoriety? Am I doing this because my mama didn't pay attention to me growing up? Am I doing this because my daddy didn't love me? Am I doing this because no one ever valued me and I just want to make six figures so I can flex? Am I doing this because... You know what I'm saying? Like, am I, oh, am I doing this for God? Am I doing this for the kingdom? Am I doing this for God's people? You know, I wish I had my Bible because I would just shake it and just tell y'all this is all that matters. Just imagine I have a Bible in my hand. This Bible, this KGB, this all that matters in life, nothing else. And so Satan is tricking us to thinking that our plans matter, that our that our thoughts matter, that our ideas matter. Nothing matters. It doesn't matter. Like, we have to humble ourselves before the Lord. My God. We have to humble our ideas, our thoughts, our goals, our desires before the Lord. How can he use us? How can he use them to save people? There's people that's going to hell. Some of your friends are going to hell and you're too afraid to say something to them. And as I'm saying that, I'm convicting myself. Some of your friends, so many people you hang out with every day are going to hell because they have no revelation of the Lord and you're too afraid to tell them about it. No one around you should not know about the gospel. If you're walking around people and no one knows the gospel, but you know the gospel, you're out of order. I'm not saying press people. I'm not saying push on people. I'm not telling you to tell people KGV, Genesis to Revelation. Oh my God, Job, you're going to hell. I'm saying the word of God should be mentioned. And even with me, like sometimes I tell people the word of God and they don't even know it's the word of God. You know, sometimes I don't have to say, well, Proverbs chapter three, verse 21 says, no, sometimes I can just say, you know, uh, you know, works works without faith is dead. And they gonna be like, oh yeah, 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 that's that's good, that's good. Cause you know, sometimes we take God off of it, then people can hear it. Sometimes the God, I don't know what that what it is about people, but when you take God off of it, and I'm not saying do that if you don't have to, but I'm just saying sometimes all you gotta do is just say the verse. You don't even gotta and they went, like, Man, that's good, like where you get that from? And that's when you can be like, Oh yeah, man, I was reading that in Bible study. Like we have to figure out strategically how to market the word of God because Satan strategically knows how to market sin. Every time I look on Instagram, it's sin. I, I sin. I could if I if I pick up my phone right now and I and I unlock it and I get on Instagram. Let's see how long it takes me to run into sin. Right? All I'm gonna do sin. I didn't even I sin because I see a couple who's living in immorality. And they not married. Sin. It didn't even take me long. Sin. Sin right there. And I'm not saying this to judge people, but I'm just saying Satan markets sin so well. He puts it in music. He puts it in movies. He puts it in TV shows. How we how we how we market in the word of God. You telling me you got three degrees, you got your bachelor's, your master's, and your PhD, and you don't know how to market the word of God? You don't know how to just sauce it up to make it digestible. You don't know how to do that. Why, then why you got a PhD? What was the purpose of the PhD if you don't even know how to market the word of God? And that's what happens when you pursue things of the earth and not of the spirit. You got the earth, the earth will crown you. There's my thing with that. Y'all let the world crown you. Y'all know I get no respect. None. Because it is right here. I get no respect because it is right here. And that's great because it keeps me humble. It keeps me humble because no one cares and everybody's just want to give me respect for this right here. It keeps me lowly. It keeps me humble. I, I, I can't get a high head. No one's hyping me up. I don't get to have a big head. I don't get hyped up for spreading the word of God. People be scrolling past my stuff all day. I'm losing friends and family over this. I don't get hyped up for spreading this word of God.
And that's y'all some of y'all problem, y'all people pleasers. Y'all want y'all want love. The word says they hated him first, which is Jesus. So they will hate you. They hated Jesus first. The, I'm comforted in the fact that I'm losing so much for this right here because they hated Jesus first to the point where they hung him. They not hung him. I'm so sorry, y'all. They tortured him on a torture stake and they kill him so he was disfigured and unrecognizable. And he did that. Because he loved us and we can't just post a scripture. We can't just post a scripture. You telling me your Lord and Savior hopped up on that torture straight and was tormented physically. He said, take this cup for me. But Lord, if it's your will, let it be done. Jesus didn't really want to go like that, but he had a responsibility to his Lord and Savior and his Father for the greater good of us. And y'all can't post y'all a little Bible scripture. But every time you get a new pair of shoes, I know. Every time you go binge truck, I know. Every time you get a new job, I know. I get on LinkedIn, I know every accomplishment. What about Jesus' accomplishments? What about Jesus? What about Jesus, y'all? What about Jesus? We love ourselves too much. That's what the scripture is saying. The last days will be lovers of ourselves. We love ourselves too much. Why do we love ourselves? Because no one loved us. The Lord loves you. But that's not enough, though, right? Ah, you want a public, you want public love. You want height. Oh, Oh, you want clout? Oh, oh, okay. That's what it is for sure. Yeah, y'all. <clears throat> and don't mind me. I get passionate. I love y'all though. And look, everything I'm telling y'all is the same thing I wish somebody told me. Ain't nobody, nobody told me this. When I tell you guys I have to open a Bible for myself and read and read and read and read. Nobody helped me to the word of God. I mean, I had a couple encounters. But like this walk was really out of out of I don't even know like the Lord just he he had his way with me. And so um I want to tell you I don't operate out of desperation. Um I'm going to give y'all just a little story uh I went to Zara and I saw this two piece say it was cute. I love Zara. I love Zara. Um Zara Zara can do me no wrong And um it was really cute But I didn't want to spend a hundred dollars on a two piece set You know like a hoodie and a sweatpants It's getting cold outside I want to look cute and chilly in a two piece set With some sneakers But I can't afford that Because it's just too expensive Because I make less money Y'all forgot I make less money than I ever made in my life I make as much money right now As a 24 year old woman That I made in high school And so You know I see it I'm looking at it But you know the Lord has convicted me Of my idolatry shopping habit And so I couldn't buy anything and so um, I went to H&M and I saw some sweatpants, you know, for, you know, I thought they were $16.99, but I got to the cash register and it was $19.99. Now, it was a cute color. It was wide leg and it was flare, but they wasn't good quality like the ones at Zara. They were thin. I could tell if I washed them a couple of times, they would get, uh, begin to like the material would probably change. And so like, don't operate in desperation. Sometimes we find ourselves impatient. We got to get it. We can't get what we want, so we go to the next best thing. I I didn't want those. I wanted you know some sweatpants, but at what cost? You know, yeah, they were cheaper, but they were not as worthy as the real thing. And so the real thing is always God, and what's always after that is Satan. Satan's always second best to God, and I don't even want to say second best, but you know, Satan is always under God, and so whatever Satan to offer you is gonna be easier to have. You're not gonna have to do much for it. It's gonna be it's gonna be right there in your face. You're not gonna have to work for it. You're not gonna have to pray for it. You're not gonna have to fast for it. You're not gonna have to seek the Lord for it. But what the Lord wants for you, you're gonna have to seek his face, y'all. Y'all gonna have to seek his face. I'll read some scripture real quick. Um just to put this out there. I love scripture. Um, but I have a statement first. Is it God's will or is it God's grace? God often gives his children to their own desires to satisfy the wickedness in their hearts. Are your blessings God's perfect will over your life or are they a reflection of him delivering you into your own disobedience? My God. Jeremiah 115 reads before I formed you in the womb I knew you before you were born I set you apart I appointed you as a prophet to the nations my God Romans chapter 1 verse 24 reads therefore God gave them up 
in the lust of their hearts to impurity, to the dishonoring of their bodies among themselves. The Lord will let you do what you want to do. The, the text says that. So when people say, you know, I just want to thank God for the, at the worst show, we still ought to talk to stars. I just want to thank God for uh, allowing me to have. I just want to thank God for allowing me to have this moment before you all when they know that had nothing to do with God. When every single song in that word is bleeped out on the radio, I got bleep, 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 sticking in my bleep, 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 and we going to bend it and stick bleep, 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 and I bleep, bleep, bleep. God did not help you make that profound, profane song. God is holy. What made you think that? What, 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 what makes y'all think that God helped you write a song about lust and perversion? And y'all sit up there and then I just want to thank God. What God? Y'all must be talking about the God of this earth, which is Satan, which they, which they probably are because they don't say Jesus. You know, until y'all say Jesus, I don't know who y'all talking about. Jesus. And so, yeah, you know, um, we love ourselves more than we love God. We do. It's it's okay. You have to admit that to yourself. Like it's it's okay because first to to really truly change, you gotta admit the truth. So if you love yourself more than you love God in any area of your life, it will show in your love life. If you want to be married more than you want to honor God. If you want to make more money, more than you want to honor God. If you want to be seen and be more than you want to honor God. It's just so easy. Like if any, in any area of your life, if you're not surrendered to the father, if you still trying to prove people wrong from high school and college, and you still trying to show people and your mama and daddy, one day you're going to be somebody. If you're, if you're just trying to do any of those things, you're not surrendered. I have to think about David. God had to remind me about David. Because if, for those who don't know, I'm a hard worker. I'm a hard, 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 hard worker to the point where I don't even want to work no more. I put in a lot of energy and time into things that had nothing to do with God. So now that I'm coming back to the Lord, I'm a little, I was tired. But the Lord is so good. All of what y'all see before me, all this, this ring light, y'all can't see this camera, y'all can't see it, this microphone, all of these things. I had this, this tablet that y'all can't see, this pod track right here, this equipment, y'all can't see. I had all these things when I was hyper ambitious. The Lord told me to repent and he told me to sit before him and then he repurposed all of these things. Two years ago, I wasn't talking about God. I was talking about what rap, I was talking about the hottest stuff on the shade room. He let me do that. God let me buy all this equipment. I spent thousands of dollars on this stuff. He let me do that. He delivered me over to my own desires. And then I destroyed myself publicly. I went out sad publicly. And I had to I had to go through I had to go through so much mental torment to even to get back on this camera. I had to sit with the Lord. I had to cry. I had to repent. I had to learn to love God. This isn't this isn't fake. This is real. I had to learn how to love him this way. I had to learn how to love the Lord. And the whole time while I was trying to learn how to love the Lord, he already loved me. The Lord was waiting on me. He already loved me. But he was waiting on me. Is the Lord waiting on you to love him? He already loves you. In your sin and in your iniquity, he hates it. He wants you to stop, but he loves you. The Lord is good. To the sinners and to the saints. The gospel is about the good news. It's a good God, but we got to honor him. And I just want to talk about this. And this may be foreshadowing. But there's a big issue right now. There's a big issue with alcoholism with young people. Drunkards will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. That's a Bible verse. Drunkard, drunkards, I'm talking about y'all, Don, Don, all y'all, 
Drunkards won't inherit the kingdom of heaven. We got to love Christ more than we love culture. You don't think I want to... Don. Don. I mean, I don't, but like maybe I would have wanted to in the, the old me. I don't know. You know? Don. The, I mean, the song is catchy. I'll give y'all that. Don, Don. Don. That Don is taking y'all all the way to hell. I, I, that's not me saying it. Don't hate me. If anything, hate the scripture. Don't hate me now. Don't hate me. I'm just... Um, God's not pleased with all this this drunkenness. I'm 24 years old, so I, I'm 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 telling y'all what I see every Saturday, every Friday. Y'all are drunk. Y'all are not. The scriptures say be sober, minded. Y'all drunk all the time. Y'all can't pray for nobody. Y'all drunk. <laughs> y'all drunk. Who you gonna pray for? Who are y'all going? Do y'all not know as Christians, one of the best artilleries we have is prayer. Do y'all not know the power of prayer pushing p pushing prayer? Oh y'all don't know y'all Christians that don't know the per the power of prayer. Y'all drunk every weekend. Who are y'all praying for? Y'all can't just pray for people on Sunday. They already spiritually dead. If I gotta wait to receive a prayer on Sunday. <sighs> I'm I'm out of here. I'm already in my sin. Y'all 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 waited too late. I'm gonna read this Bible verse about um wine. Um But you know the Lord isn't the Lord isn't pleased with all this alcoholism, y'all. I really don't know when Christians started drinking. Like when did I mean when did Christians start thinking drinking heavy was like a good idea? And then here's the thing, y'all get to drinking, and then next thing you know, y'all lustful, and then y'all posting little pictures and all this lust. Y'all, y'all, y'all lust, y'all being lusty. It's 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 sinful. It's lusty. It's lusty. It's just lusty. It's lusty. I just, I don't, and you know, you know, there's a conversation. Should Christians drink wine? Should dr Christians drink alcohol? Should they not? You know, I'm not here to get into that. I have my own convictions. I'm not here to debate convictions with y'all. I personally, if I'm going to be honest, I don't drink, I don't drink alcohol or wine anymore. Um, it started off with me no longer drinking alcohol. Then I stopped drinking wine because I read about John the Baptist's birth. And in the scripture, it said John was to never drink strong drink or wine for the purpose of consecration. And I said, you know, I always don't know John the Baptist, but I'm like, you know, John the Baptist wants to consecrate himself away from alcohol and strong drink so he can have a better relationship with the Lord. You know, I might as well do the same thing. So that that's just I did that because that's I love the Lord, you know. Obviously, the scripture says. Um, you know, not to be drunker, but, you know, to me, it's just such a great area of being you drunk a drink and now you're not drunk. But of course, you're not sober, like now you're tipsy. And it's just like, it's just such a gray area, you know, for me. And there's a whole deep conversation about why. I'm just not going to get into it. I'm really trying to find this Bible verse um, um, about drinking why. I can't find it and I wish I had it. It's just such a it's such a good um part um in the Bible about it. But that means I'm gonna just have to talk about this again. Um and it's not gonna be a popular video. People are probably not gonna like what I have to say, but it's it's okay. I don't do this work, um I don't do this to be loved. You know, the, the world hated Jesus first. Y'all killed Jesus. I don't I don't care what the world has to say. Y'all killed a they killed a perfect man. It's nothing I can do to make people happy. 